Welcome to the 2021 awards presentation, a highlight of every bio conference. I am Linda Level, president of bio. Thanks to generous donations from our members and patrons, bio offers five awards and four fellowships. Our highest honor and oldest award is the bio award given to someone who has made an outstanding contribution to the art and craft of biography. That award this year goes to David Levering Lewis, who will be introduced on Saturday and will give the keynote address. Our next oldest award is the Plutarch Award, given annually to the best biography of the year as determined by a jury of bio members. The winner will be revealed at the conclusion of the conference on Sunday. A third award, the Editorial Excellence Award, is presented at a special ceremony in November. The 2020 recipient of the award was Gayatri Potnike. Bio members recognize that we could not do our work without the support of many others. And we like to recognize outstanding editors who have worked with biographers and helped us realize our goals. A fourth award, the Biblio Award, goes to those who help us on the front end of biography, the librarians and archivists. In a few moments, Tim Dugan and Scott Berg will present the Biblio Award to Jeff Flannery. I am pleased now to present our fifth award, the Ray A. Shepard Award for Service. This award is not given every year and was last given three years ago. It is named for Ray Shepard, a founding member of BIO who organized the first BIO conference in Boston. We have many dedicated volunteers working for BIO and this award goes to honor service above and beyond what other volunteers do. I am pleased to present the 2021 Ray Shepard Award to Sonia Williams. Sonia is a professor in the Department of Media, Journalism and Film at Howard University in Washington, DC. She grew up in the Bronx and was educated at LaGuardia High School of Music and the Performing Arts, the Manhattan School of Music, Columbia College, Chicago, and Ohio University. She has also taught at the college level in Florida, North Carolina, and South Africa. She is the author of the biography, Word Warrior, Richard Durham, Radio and Freedom. And she has excelled in her chosen field of radio. The numerous shows she has produced for National Public Radio, Public Radio International, and the Smithsonian Institution include th three series that won the coveted George Foster Peabody Award for significant and meritorious achievement. Sonia has served on BIO's board of directors for the past six years and one year co-chaired the program committee. But this award recognizes especially the professional expertise and dedication Sonia has brought to our podcast program for the past three years. Along with Lisa Napoli, Sonia has produced over 60 podcasts for BIO. Most of these are interviews with BIO members about their new books. In addition to the time she spends doing the actual interviews, she devotes careful attention to editing and producing them. BIO makes these outstanding, highly professional podcasts free and available to the public. It gives me great pleasure to present Sonia Williams with the Ray Shepard Award for Service. Although I can't physically hand her the award, you can see the award itself in her Zoom frame. Sonia? Thank you, Linda. I really appreciate it. And thank you, Bio, for this recognition. Um, I especially appreciate this award since it's named for fellow biographer and longtime bio member Ray Shepard. I served on the board with Ray and he was one of our early interviewees and supporters of our bio podcast series. So thank you, Ray, 
for your service and encouragement, and thank you, Bio, for this award. My work on the Bio podcast series is just one way that fellow podcast producer Lisa Napoli and I can, can continue to do what we love, and that is interviewing people, getting to know them, talking with artists, and sharing those in, edited interviews with anyone who's interested. So again, thank you, Bio, and I truly appreciate this honor. Thank you, Sonia. And I will now turn the program over to Tim Dugan. Um, Tim Dugan is an editor, very well-known editor, former recipient of our Editorial Excellence Award. Um, today, he is serving in the, representing the awards committee. Um, Tim is also a member of our advisory council, and I will turn it over to Tim to introduce the recipient of the Biblio Award. Thank you so much, Linda. Uh, I'm thrilled to be able to announce uh, the winner of this year's Biblio Award, uh, which is presented annually to recognize a librarian or archivist who's made an exceptional contribution to the craft of biography. And it's our pleasure this year to award it to Jeffrey Flannery from the Library of Congress. Jeff recently retired after serving for many years as the head of the reference and reader services section of the manuscript division at the library, where he began his career in 1985. So I'd like to say many, many congratulations to you, Jeff, from everyone here at BIO, and many, many thanks for your guidance, expertise, and wisdom that you've offered to so many authors. I first heard about Jeff's phenomenal work and the amazing support he's been able to offer to writers from the great biographer A. Scott Berg. Scott is someone we all know for his masterful biographies, starting with Maxwell Perkins. He's currently working on a biography of Thurgood Marshall, which brought him to the Library of Congress. So I'm gonna turn it over now to Scott, who can offer a few words about Jeff's work, having seen it firsthand. Thanks so much, Scott. I think you're muted, Scott. Because all of you toil in and around the vineyard of biography, you don't need to be told the importance of librarians and archivists that you honor with your Biblio Award. And each of you, I'm sure, has a favorite library in the world. Uh, for more than a half century plowing through archives in most of the great libraries and institutions in this country, I have several. But one looms largest for me, the Library of Congress, the jewel in the American cultural crown. And so it thrills me that Bio has selected as this year's Biblio recipient, Jeffrey Flannery, who less than five months ago retired as head of the Library of Congress manuscript reading room. Jeff was born in Pennsylvania, where he was also raised and educated, receiving his bachelor's degree from Temple University, a master's in history from Duquesne University, and a master's in library science from the University of Pittsburgh, where he then worked in the archives of industrial society. He soon made the leap to the Library of Congress, where he spent most of his 35-year library career, first as a reference librarian, and for the last 14 years as head of the reading room. For any of us who have spent more than two days in that cavernous room on the ground floor of the Madison building, in my case, most of the two years preceding the pandemic shutdown, Jeff has proved to be more than an overseer. He became an integral part of my research process and he became a friend. And upon my arrival a few years ago there uh, to break ground on my latest research, Jeff made a point of having a long chat with me in his cluttered office. And from that meeting forward, I can hardly recall a day in the reading room when he didn't provide some answer to a research question, often one I hadn't realized I should have asked. Because the Library of Congress becomes an academic truck stop for so many of us itinerant scholars, he schooled me from the start in research sites online and in my hometown of Los Angeles so that I wouldn't be spending time in Washington reading material that I could access just as readily in Southern California. He was constantly thinking of collections tangential to the one I was mining, where he knew I'd find an important and probably untapped resources. Several times a week, it seemed, he'd remember a particular document, something he had seen years ago, tucked in one collection or another. And if a few days passed and I hadn't been able to unearth it, he'd summon me to his office to tell me that he'd taken the liberty of finding it himself. And oh, by the way, I made a copy for you. 
Other times, if I looked too buried in documents for even a short conversation, he'd simply walk by my place at table 12 and quietly drop off some pages on top of my note cards. Monday through Friday, I would see him. And then when I'd arrive on Saturday morning, there he'd be behind the desk, even though he could have easily assigned weekend duty to any of the people with whom he worked. Rather the way the director of a motion picture sets the tone and tempo on a movie, so too did Jeff set the mood within the reading room, one of adherence to the rules that the Library of Congress demands, but, but always by, by humanizing the institution, providing a personal touch, heartfelt friendliness and laughs because Jeff is a lot of fun. He turned what could be an austere warehouse into an intense, into an intimate setting. Uh, one in which on any given day, any number of biographies are being researched. And that's always Jeff's hope because he loves reading them. And he takes great pride and pleasure over the years, getting to work with Ron Chernow, David McCullough, David Marinus, Patricia O'Toole, Robert Remini, Evan Thomas, David Michaelis, Candace Millard, Nigel Hamilton, well, the list just goes on and on. Happily, I'm hoping to return to the library in the fall. Sadly, I will not find Jeff working there. But I know the team he has left in place has learned from him, not just the highest professional standards, but also those Flannery-like personal touches that make the reading room such an exciting place in which to work. So let's all return to our desks so that we can give this year's Biblio Award winner plenty to read in the years to come. But first, please take this moment to celebrate the career of Jeffrey Flannery, whose work has given so much to so many, and a man who loves the books that his work yields. Congratulations, Jeff, and thank you. Oh, um, that was quite some comment. Uh, thank you so much, Scott, for those kind words. I'm, I'm not sure that they were all well-deserved, but I certainly appreciate uh, your, your sentiment. Um, working at the Library of Congress has been a dream job. Uh, for 35 years, I've had the privilege of strolling down the stack aisles, surrounded by the personal papers of people like George Washington and Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass and, and uh, Susan B. Anthony and countless other American icons. Uh, it's, it's been a rare privilege and uh, one that I've enjoyed every day. I've also benefited by the staff at the library, my colleagues who were, who are just wonderful to work with, knowledgeable, talented, and committed to helping researchers and to uh, making these priceless documents available to, to uh, Americans uh, who use the library. And, and not just Americans, I should say, any scholars uh, uh, from, from around the world. I've also uh, just enjoy the interactions with the researchers. We have all types of researchers. We have genealogists, we have graduate students, we have faculty members, we have lawyers, uh, anybody over the age of 16 who has a, a library card can come in and use the collections. And uh, that interaction with the researchers, I think has made me a better professional, a better librarian. You get to talk with the researchers, find out what they're doing. You get enthused with their projects. You start to make connections that maybe weren't there before or through the library's catalogs and finding aids. And it's just, as I said, uh, leads to these eureka moments. Uh, sometimes I've heard the researchers in the reading room uh, uh, let out an audible sigh. You come down, you think, oh, maybe they're you know, having an incident. But they're really just, uh, they found a document that, that has put things together for them. And they're just so eager to share. And it's, it's, it's hard not to get caught up with that uh, enthusiasm. Um, I'm looking forward to my retirement. I'm looking forward to being on the other side of the reference desk. Uh, perhaps I'll have my own Eureka moments that I'll be able to share with the staff. And I just wanna thank BIO. I wanna thank the members for providing me a lifetime of these moments. And uh, I couldn't be more thrilled with this award. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jeff, and congratulations to you. 
Um, we're now going to move to announcements of our fellowship winners. Um, and we'll start with um, the Robert and Ina Caro Fellowship. And this will be introduced by the committee chair um, who made the selection, Deidre David. Thank you. Um, in honor of the work of Robert and Ina Caro, BIO in 2018 established a research and travel fellowship designed to support the work in progress of BIO members. Fellowship winners receive funding for trips to archives or to important settings in their subjects' lives, which is, I think, a reflection of the importance of place in the work of Robert Caro. In this, our fourth year, I'm delighted to introduce and to congratulate our 2021 fellowship winners, Humera Alfredi and Iris Dunkel. Humera is working on a biography of Noor Inayat Khan, an Indian American woman who posthumously became a decorated war hero for her role in guerrilla tactics in occupied France in World War II. Humira will travel to prisons in Germany where Noor was isolated for 10 months. And she's also going to London to the Imperial War Museum where she plans to listen to sound files bearing testimonies of Noor's colleagues in the fields. So Humira, would you like to say a few words to amplify my brief remarks? Thank you so much, Deidre. I am absolutely thrilled and deeply honored to receive a Robert and Ina Caro Fellowship. My heartfelt thanks to you and the esteemed members of the Caro Committee and to BIO. Your support means the world, literally. Thanks to this award, I can plan a much needed research trip to Europe. As you mentioned, I'll visit the Karlsruhe and Fort Sam prisons where Nur Inayat Khan spent the last 10 months of her life in solitary confinement before she was transferred to the Dachau concentration camp. I have found it challenging to write about this period in Noor's life without having been to Karlsruhe or, for, or to Fortsheim. I can only imagine, I can only imagine, and imagination can only take me so far, especially as there are jarring gaps in historical documentation of Noor's time in these prisons. There are snippets of information, but that is all. For my biography to come as close to the truth of Noor's experience, I must walk the grounds and the halls, crouch on the floor, run my fingers along the walls, smell the air outdoors and inside, and though we are separated by time and change, I feel something, some kind of knowing will be communicated to me, insights that can only unfold in the physical, tangible context of space. Whilst in Germany, I'll also visit the Karlsruhe archives. Writing a biography requires many things of the writer. There's a private, somewhat mystical act of communing with the spirit of the person one is writing about, which requires stillness, contemplative atmosphere, tranquility of mind and heart. Then there are the vigorous processes of research, investigation and inquiry that have to happen, which are integral to a biography project. Imagination and curiosity often serve as intuitive early guides to research. All of these activities, however, require an infrastructure. The Caro Fellowship is a great gift. I'm truly thankful for your support on this journey as I write my biography of Nuri Nail Khan. Thank you. Thank you, Humira. Um, I'm pleased now to introduce um, uh, the second of our 2021 fellowship winners, Iris Dunkel. Now, Iris is working on a biography of the author Sonora Babb, uh, a female writer at this point, I think not too well known. And Iris is going to correct that lack of knowledge about Sonora Babb in her biography. She's a female writer of the American West. And Iris plans to trace the narrative of Belle Babb's extraordinary life from her poverty stricken upbringing in the Oklahoma Territory to her work in the farm administration camps in California and to her years traveling in Europe, 
Mexico and the Soviet Union. Iris will be going to the Harry Ransom Center at the University of Texas, Austin, which we all hope will be reopening in the fall, where she will examine a large archive of Babs papers. Iris, would you like to say a few more words about your project? Sure, thank, thank you so much. Uh, it's, it's such an incredible honor um, to receive, to receive this, uh, the CARO Award and my thanks goes to obviously to the CAROs um, and to BIO and to um, Deidre, to you and to the esteemed committee who, um, who chose to support my work. Um, I am primary, I was, I am a poet and a biographer. And for me, writing about place is um, at the heart of all of my writing. And in order to actually, um, in, in order to um, create that sense of place, I need to actually physically be in that place um, and to, to, you know, to um, experience it with all of my senses um, in order to you know, reenact it. And, and this becomes especially important when we're writing about um, women writers who have been erased um, from the androcentric idea of the West. Um, as you mentioned, I'm going to be using this um, wonderful funding to be able to travel to the Harry Ransom Center at the University of Texas at Austin, um, which I am, I am willing to open by the fall, um, you know, to really examine uh, the majority of um, uh, Sonora Babs papers. Um, but I also am going to be visiting um, the Oklahoma Panhandle um, where she was born. Um, I'm also going to be visiting the Eastern Plains of Colorado, where Sonora lived in a dugout um, with her family. Um, and I hope to visit um, Southern California, where she um, she moved in 1929, um, right before the, the stock market crashed, um, to start her life as a writer, and to Bakersfield, um, to the camp where um, she wrote one of her most important novels, whose names are unknown, which was finally published in 2004. So this is an extraordinary gift. Um, and I am so incredibly grateful um, to have the opportunity to really reconstruct a very important writer's life. So thank you so much. Congratulations, Iris and Humera. Um, the next fellowship to be announced is the Hazel, Hazel Rowley Fellowship, and this will be announced by the chair of that committee, Natalie Dykstra. Thank you so much. Um, I am very pleased to present Tanya Paperni with the Hazel Rowley Prize. Um, which is given every year to a first time biographer in memory of Hazel Raleigh, who understood the need for biographers to help and support one another. Tanya's project, Tender Fierce, The Life and Death of a Revolutionary Prababushka, is a gripping story of Tatiana Ivanova Shadalova Rabinovich, an activist in revolutionary Russia who died in Stalin's purges. The committee was so impressed with the urgency of Tanya's prose about an important story of political tyranny that has been little told. Tanya's biography of her great grandmother will be among the first English language works written by a descendant of Stalin's victims. Tanya is a writer and artist based in Washington, DC. She earned an MFA in nonfiction and literary translation from Columbia University and her work has appeared in such publications as The Atlantic and The Washington Post. So many congratulations from the committee and from BIO. We wish you the best and keep us posted on your progress to pub publication. Thank you so much, Natalie. Um, I really can't uh, overstate how meaningful this award is to me. I've been toiling away on this project largely uh, alone for over a decade. I have this yellow binder here with sloppy words, great grandmother written on it that I've been collecting since about 2006. And um, only very recently did I 
quit my full-time job and say, there's no way I can work on this for another decade. I would like to finish this proposal and get this book out into the world. So to get this award, um, not more than two or three months after I made that leap of faith um, has been such a needed confidence boost, uh, recognition, connection, uh, you know, financial support, connection to an agent, uh, connection to all of you through, you know, mentorship and friendship has been such a, a reminder that I made the right choice um, in, in taking a, a leap of faith to focus on this project. Um, and also, personally, it's just very moving and very powerful to hear someone speak my great grandmother's name aloud, who's not me or a member of my family. So uh, this award has really helped me uh, remember and think about how part of my project is resuscitating her and, and bringing her back from the dead and having her be someone that the world knows after uh, tyranny and, and so many authoritarian forces tried to erase her from the face of the earth. So, so grateful, truly, it just gives me goosebumps uh, to receive this award and really looking forward to um, hopefully having something to share with you all in the years to come. Thank you again. Congratulations, Tanya, and thank you, Natalie. Um, I'm now pleased to introduce our newest award. Um, this is the first year that it's been offered, largely thanks to the initiative of Eric Washington, who will um, introduce the person who will present the award. So I turn this over to you, Eric. Hi. The Rollin Fellowship commemorates 19th century author and activist Francis Ann Rollin Whipper, pen named Frank A. Rollin, whose 1868 biography, Life and Public Services of Martin R. Delaney, about a black abolitionist journalist, physician, and Union Army officer, positioned her among the first recorded African-American biographers. At the time, her precedent prompted calls for more biographies of African-Americans, which this fellowship, born on the currents of the Black Lives Matter movement, seeks to, to carry on in her honor. The Rollin Fellowship awards $2,000 to an author working on a biographical work about an African-American figure or figures whose story provides a significant contribution to our understanding of the Black experience. It also advances BIO's commitment to remediate the disproportionate reflection of Black lives and voices in published biography and to encourage diversity in the field. Our call for submissions made the vast breadth of that field more than evident. The dozens of respondents to this new fellowship, both domestic and international, introduced us to an unpre unpredictable array of time periods, geographical locales, and African-American individuals who laid bare their singular experiences. Regrettably, we could only pick one, and we're elated with the one that we picked. The winning proposal that captivated the judging committee by Rachel Swarns was for a multi-generational biography of an enslaved black family that was torn apart in 1838 when the nation's most prominent Jesuit priest sold 272 men, women, and children to save Georgetown University from financial ruin. We're very excited about this book's prospects. Four quick but profound thank yous to the ad hoc Black Lives Matter Committee in the persons of Sarah Kilborn, Anne Boyd Ryu, and Sonia Williams whose invaluable teamwork cobbled the Rollin Fellowship into shape, to Peniel Joseph and Pamela Newkirk, who agreed faster than a finger can hit send to join me as the Rollin Fellowship Judging Committee, to Linda Level and her husband, Brooks Garner, who so generously underwrote the Rollin Fellowship's inaugural prize, and to the great granddaughter of the award's namesake and herself, the author of Pride of Family, Four Generations of African American, Afri African, of American Women of Color, sorry, uh, who agreed to make this fellowship's debut presentation to its inaugural winner, Ione. Oh, thank, thank you, Eric. Oh, I am so delighted and truly honored to be present for the Biographers International Fellowship Award in the name of my great-grandmother, <laughs> as well, uh, Francis and Rollin Whipper Frank. Special thanks to Eric uh, wonderful Eric and the other distinguished Black Lives Matter committee members. Truly, truly grateful for your attention to this. Frank put her heart and soul into her work during the Reconstruction era, and she passed her passion down to me. 
via her book on Martin Delaney, Major Delaney, and her 1868 diary. So as she was pre prevented by the horrific times from fully making her mark in literature, as she put it, it has been my deepest joy to bring her endeavor to the greater attention of the world. I know that Frank would be so pleased that Rachel L. Swarns is the fellowship's inaugural recipient. Uh, Frank and her children were residents of Washington, D.C. only 40 years after those devastating events of 1838. And I feel she would have had some awareness of the lingering shock waves affecting so many lives. This is an important and absolutely timely work indeed. Congratulations, Rachel, from Frank and from me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's such an honor to be the inaugural recipient of this fellowship. And um, I want to thank Eric Ione, the committee, and BIO. I share Francis Rollins' commitment to illuminating the lives of African Americans. And this award will help me to continue my work, unearthing the stories of the enslaved people who fueled the growth of Georgetown and the Catholic Church, and the stories of their descendants who are pressing these institutions to reckon with that history. Their story illuminates a larger story, a foundational one for our country. Enslaved people have been largely left out of the origin story traditionally told about um, our universities um, and, and the Catholic Church in the United States. Americans often um, uh, view these institutions as, as Northern ones, right? The Catholic Church is a Northern church, an immigrant church. Um, but in the early days of uh, the American Republic, many of these institutions um, relied on plantations and enslaved laborers. Uh, for their sustenance and unearthing um, the story of the enslaved, of this enslaved family is painstaking work. Um, you are weaving together bits and pieces and fragments and um, your support will help me to bring the story of this family to light and help us, all of us, um, to better understand the legacy of slavery and how it lives with us still. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Rachel, and thank you, Eric, and I own. Um, we have one more fellowship. Uh, the Chip Bishop Fellowship um, is named in memory of a beloved board member who realized his dream of publishing a biography by attending bio conferences. Funded by James McGrath Morris, this fellowship pays the conference registration fee and provides travel money to an aspiring biographer. This year, because travel is not needed, the fellowship has multiple winners. Please join me in a round of virtual applause for all of our winners. Thank you for attending. <laughs>